programmers welcome to the very last episode of beginners forms with html and css man i'm so excited to bring this one in and i know you are too and if you do think this is going to be an exciting episode fire up your code answers and let's get coding see you there it's official steel code and that's what I'll be using in this video as we as I used the never in the last two episodes. So I'm just gonna stick with it. There's an awesome editor, everybody uses it nowadays. So you probably should get it installed if you don't have it. But any other bro any other code editor will work for this this tutorial, so no sweating about it. Right. So yeah, I just open the code and then um I'm just just gliding through it and then trying to Show you um, a few changes I made to it. I just added a few comments, so if you can see clearly, there's just a few more comments added. Though there, there was just only one comment the last time, or even two, but I just added a few more comments, and then all these changes has been put into the GitHub repository. So if you go there, you're going to um see these changes. You're going to have access to these comments, and then they will serve as guidance for you guys to um go through this whole tutorial with ease. Okay right so i have the display right here so i just switch to that display so here's the display of what we did the very last time we just added a few styles we gave a little box shadow some blue text some display flex to get things looking at a bit more like a professional form okay but yeah we have a design so we are going to make this turn this design into reality okay we are going to take the design and develop it right so we're just gonna wrap everything up today so i just go out um again with my side to side code editing which is um, a good way of seeing what you do and it's a good way of making tutorials because um you get to see what you're doing it just it's not like a whole magical thing right so you see what you're doing right also i just added one more class here to this button so that we just can we can um start this button from CSS with just this class name, right? Cool. So today we'll be working mostly in the CSS. We didn't be touching the HTML much. We will just work in the CSS and also in the CSS I added a few comments um which you can see a whole lot of comments. So all these things are comments okay so you can just get them with control um so control then forward slash will give you a comment okay so that's just a, a template of a comment so I just use that to create a few more comments also to serve as guidance when you go onto or into the github repository right cool all right so let's take a look at our design and finish this up already cool so we we have things looking nice now let's style this so you can see that this here is um it's kind of wrapped we have the text wrapping onto another line that to sign up right it's it's right on the next line then you might want us on top right so let's see how we can do that cool so we, we just have to take the name the uh, the class name we give to that we give the class of form title so we just might just copy that copy that real quick then we come back to our css and what we do here is dot form dot this form title so i'm just going to explain everything that's going on here it's nothing too scary so all this means is that we have a form element which is the parent element and inside that form element we have a form title then if you come to the html you see that that's actually true because this whole thing is a form element and inside there we actually have this h1 with a class of form title so that's just the same thing i'm trying to kind of um visualize here in a css so if you actually look here Consider we have an element with a class of form and in there we have a form title so all the styles we put here are going to be applied to this final element or this final selector right cool so i'll just say text align a text align of sorry text align of um center align of center all right so that should put the text to the center it's already in a center you can see that nothing much has happened cool then i'm going to give it a width a width right so i'll give it a width of let's see 50 percent okay so you can see that that's it's it's getting close to what we want but we have three lines now so we can just keep um increasing the width here maybe some 70 percent then you can see that we have something close to our design 
you can make it um to 65 you can just keep playing around with the values until you get what's in the design all right so you can start you have something close to that now we have it just like how it's here but the problem now is that it's not in the center anymore it's now moved on to the, the left side then that's a simple problem we can solve so we just see margin all right so we see margin then we see zero and then o2 right so margin zero o2 is a very quick way of center aligning things so you can see that now it's in the center right so cool so margin here is a short time property for margin top margin right margin left and margin bottom so what we are doing here is that we are telling the browser to give zero to the top and bottom margins and o2 so that means the browser should decide for the left and right margin so then what it does is that it just pushes it uh, sorry it pushes it into the middle so we just push everything the whole element into the middle that's just the auto decision of the browser all right cool so next up what's el what else let's see what we have here then it has a little space down here you can see that just this little space at the bottom of it so to do that it's simple we can come over here then we see um 0.5 m and i'm going to explain what this is going to do as well so you can see that we have that speech created here then what this whole thing means now is that we have the top alone being zero so the zero margin on the top what the speech i seen here is created by the padding of the form so if i'm to take this padding off that speech wouldn't be there anymore so you can see that that speech isn't there anymore we are just lacking some kind of speech here so that's why i put that there so margin zero for the form title is actually there but because of the padding of the parent of this whole form that's why you see the space there but actually the margin this form here has no margin top then this left and right so has been decided by the browser so o2 in the middle is for the left and the right and the last value here is for the bottom all right so you don't need to sweat about this um, i'll make a video on explaining how the margin and the padding um short-term properties work and then if you're looking forward to that just leave a like on this video and i'll upload that video as soon as possible cool so that's what's done and then because we have that space here we are getting pretty close to finishing this up yep then we would like to decrease the space between the two lines in the design i forgot to decrease our space having um too much of space between the two lines isn't so awesome i just kind of forgot about that so here in the development we can fix that right so we can fix that with another css property called line height so all these blue the ones you see in blue deep blue are called the properties okay and then the values we give them are what we see here after the um the the, the colon and then the semicolon right so it's between the colon and the semicolon right so i just give it a line height of one and then see that should decrease the speed a little more and you can just see 1.1 so you can just keep playing around with the values until you have something that you need all right cool so let, let's see how this is going to also look on um mobile so this is not really bad cool so what i like to do here is i'll come back to the form the whole form and i'll give it a width of i'll give it a width of 60 percent i'll give it a width of 60 percent then a max width so i'm just going to explain everything so don't don't worry about any of these i'm going to explain all of them cool so we can just keep make this a bit of 70 percent then maybe some 500 pixels keep playing around the values until you have something that looks like the design so that's exactly what i'm trying to do here so let's see uh, okay that's stretching up too much max with 500 pixels with 80 percent so let's see how that does okay yes so this 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 is looking good this is awesome exactly what i was looking for so our width here 80 percent means the form should take 80 percent of its parents container and then if you come to the html you can see that this form is right in the body element so it's this body element is just like the empty space we have outside here this whole empty space is the body element so we are telling the form to take 80 percent of that space okay so we're just going to take 80 percent and again we are seeing that max with the 500 pixels so we are seeing that it should not stretch beyond 500 pixels so you can keep growing but 
eventually so you can it can shrink and can grow but it shouldn't grow beyond 500 pixels so that's what the max width is for so without the max width let's see what happens let's see what happens without the max width so without the max width you can see that the form just becomes it keeps growing and then it keeps taking up 80 percent and we have this ugly looking just so lengthy form right that's not what we want okay so that's why we see max width of 80 percent sorry max max width of 500 pixels awesome awesome good so we are getting pretty close we are getting pretty close then we just have to start this and then the button we have to start the inputs and then the button which is not so difficult let's go and finish that off too as well cool so we come to our html then we look at all the, we look at the forms okay so we take um the inputs okay so we have one two three and four of those and here so we have one two three and four of those awesome so how do we we get them to look like what's in the design here how do we get them to look like that so we can do that with we can style all of them at the same time right we can style all of them at the same time and to do that then we have to give them the same class right so i just go ahead and do this real quick i'm going to give them the same class and then the way i'm duplicating my um uh, my cursor is by clicking control control plus um a click you just control click okay so you you press control and click wherever you want the cursor to fall to fall on then it just keeps falling on depending on the number of times you want it to duplicate and then if you're on a macbook it's going to be command command click or any other thing but on linux and then on um windows it's just going to be control right so that that's how it's just an easy trick in visual studio code um which is awesome okay so i'll give it a class we just give all of them a class so you can see that they are all going to have the same thing typed into them at once so that's like the, the power of using this okay so i'll give them a class of form inputs all right so i'll give them a class of form input so you can see that now they have they all have the same class right cool but nothing changes in our, in our website because we are, we have just given them a class we haven't started it yet all right so we go to our css and we see dot form again let me see that's form inputs the one we just created right now cool so this is literally means the same thing as before we have a form and inside here we have um an element or yeah an element with a, a class of um form inputs right so this is just like the parents and then this is the child so the styles here are going to be applied to the child right so this whole thing is called chaining so if you do something like this it's called chaining let me put a comment there so chaining multiple selectors all right selectors so that's what this is called in css if you do this you're chaining okay cool so then i'll give them a padding because i want some speed there so if you look in the design we have this piece in there but over here the space um within the elements is just too small so we want to increase our speed right so we say padding then let's see 1m i think i explained 1m to um to you guys the last time so it pretty much is the same thing here so you can see that we have this we have even more speeds in the elements now right so that's just a work of padding i guess gives speeds um in the elements but margin gives speeds outside the elements all right so i'll be making a video on the box model so if you want to see that as well just hit um comment down in the, the comment box and then hit the like button and then i'll be sure to do that quick cool so then what's next um here the font size is quite bigger than this you can see that here the font is just too small but here it's price it's just a, a little bit bigger and then it's even bolder right cool so how do we do that simple so we can see font size font size right so font size let me see one rem right one rem like this so let's see consider the font the fonts has increased a little more and it's, and it's awesome then to increase or to make it a bit thicker that's the the boldness of it it's just font to it the properties font to it okay then you can say we have a whole lot of values 100 is just the same as light and then it's, it's will not change anything it's just going to be the same right so that's just the default right then we have 800 which is going to be extra bold we have 900 which is like super bold right so that's 900 and we can just have the word the, the word boot okay so i just use the word boot and that's that's even more better cool so um we are we are getting close we are getting close so 
looking here you can see that we have this blue border around the elements we have this blue uh, blue border around our inputs right so we can also do that real quick so we can just say border right border uh, which is a shorthand two pixels solid then i'll say um there's this color we used so we just this our normal blue color here so you can see that now we have this a border here so two pixels here is for the width of the border so you see if i increase the two pixels to let's say some 20 pixels something you see the border becomes even thicker so that's just for the border width it has it is a it is a whole css property on its own but here you see what what's this uh, um element or oh, sorry what this property here is doing is that it's bringing together three long hand properties and then making us being making us able to write it in just one line and solid here is for the border style so we have quite a few i can see dashed then you can see that the border is going to change into dashed borders right so that's the border style then here's just obviously the border color so you can change it to anything it could be yellow right so it could be yellow then you're going to see that there awesome so we we'll just leave it as um leave it at the blue because that's what's in our design then what else do we have there we have some border radius right so you have some border radius and a background color of like gray right so we see border radius that's just a property to take away the rounded corners border radius uh, it's just a little problem with my recording but we are back and then nothing much um has been added just where we had ended at so let's just continue and finish this up already so again we look at the design here and then consider we have quite we've done the borders right and you i think you have understood any questions you can just put them in the comment box if there's anything you don't understand just put them in the comment box and i'll devote a whole video to that okay but right now i think everything is pretty much clear here we have the the inputs now with a, a blue border then we just have to add a background color and then we'll add an active state right so let's just do that so we just say background color background color is a proper name so anytime you have two um words coming together in css what you do is that you put a hyphen to separate them right so i just say background color like this and i just i took a color from a website and then i just so you see i just pasted that color there and then that's what we have here so you can see that now it looks something somewhat equal or somewhat similar right cool so yeah this, this is awesome this is awesome but i can see that if the user activates an input the border turns black and that's not what we want okay you want it to turn um wants it to be the same but the background color should turn white okay so to do that simple we can just copy this whole thing again this whole selector the one that we had chained earlier so then i'll put a, a prop um a property here or i don't know a prefix or should i say a suffix or a suffix right called focus so it comes with a colon and focus which means um we just basically for a focus state so when the user has focused on an element that's what it basically means and this is called a pseudo class right it's called a pseudo class so you can i'll link to more about pseudo classes from mdn and then you can read about those articles i think they're pretty helpful and they're going to help you out All right cool so it's a called a pseudo class and it's used or it's, it's purpose is for when a user has kind of activated a certain element on the page right cool so i just see outline color outline color is this outline you see right so this outline color you see that's what i'm trying to get rid of okay so i'll see outline color I say transparent okay so I say transparent then you can see that now if I put a hover if I am um, sorry if I activate that's inputs it's it's so um there's no um outline color is transparent so the blue border gets that the width of the border increase decreases a little but that's okay cool then we can give it a background color background color of um white so you just see white okay so you can see that now if you over if you activate it, the background color turns white cool so yeah we are pretty much done with the input so let's style up the button and let's get over with this already all right so i'll give a comment here and i'll see the submit 
that submits BTN's styles. So it's good to leave comments in your code so that later when you come back on you aren't going to get confused or um, get scared uh, about what you've done or what you're seeing, right? So cool. Then I'll say form again and I'll say dot form dot submit BTN, which is nothing too scary, as I said before. That's still the chaining method I'm using. I'm just chaining a child this child to its parents okay so if if it's not a, a child of that parent then it's not going to work but because if you come to the html let me put this in a little because when you come to the html you see that we have this button inside the form you can see that it's inside the form this is the closing elements of the form which shows that this button is inside the form so here if i chain them together then i'm going to be right the browser is going to accept it because actually this element is inside of that even looking at the visualization from here you can see that that this submit btn element is inside this form element right cool so i'll give it um pretty much the same padding as our input so i'll just give it a padding of of 1m sorry 1m so let's see what that does so you can see we have the button coming into shape then we will give it um border of none so border of none is um i want to take um away the the, the black border the, the default black border that we have here so if i zoom in a little so you can start we have this default black border given to us by the browser but we don't want that to be there so we say border then we say none like this okay so that will take away that default border so you can see that we have we have no more border there right cool then looking back at the design you can see that we have a little border radius to it we have the background color of blue then the text is um is, is white is bold and then it's, it's a bit bigger than what we have here right so we go ahead and say background color again to give that so this background color sets the color that appears behind of an element right so we want a color behind that element so that's what we do so we see our color here was nine so this this right here cool so you can see we have that there we have that over there then we just add the border radius which is for making um round corners just as we did over here the border radius we say five pixels we stick to the five pixels all right so you can see we have this border radius coming up then we'll give it a color which the color here is intended to change the text color over here so you don't see text color in css you just see color right so then you give the color you want it to turn to. You want it to be a white color. So you know that we have this white color here now. Then we give it a font weight. Okay. Of um, my font weight of bold, right? So we're going to start this. Um, it's going to be bolder now. It's, it's a bit bolder. And then let's get back to our design. It's, a, it's big. And then right now on the button here doesn't use our fonts family it doesn't use this fonts family we had given this whole fonts family it doesn't use it because i don't like it doesn't know about it right so we have to make it know about the fonts family we have installed so to do that we have to come and set the fonts family up by ourselves so we say fonts family then poppins poppins is the main font here so um, p o p p i n s then the main font is here, but in case the browser doesn't have that, we want a fallback font, and that fallback font will be sans serif, right? Cool. So sans serif. So you can see that now we have it looking a bit more like that. Then what else do we have in here? You can see that the the initials of the 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 words here are capitalized. The initials of let's and go are capitalized. How do we do that with CSS? Simple. So we just say text transform, text transform like this then we see capitalize so this basically is going to capitalize all the initials of um, a given uh, of given words okay then we have it's sorry we have the other one which is upper keys which is going to send everything into upper keys right so consider we have everything going into upper keys now cool so we just see capitalize because we are following the design you have to follow design that you're given as a developer you follow the designs that have been given onto you right cool then we just increase the font size a little more so we say font size which i think you guys pretty much understand why it does now and it's just intuitive because it's kind of self-explanatory right 
here in font size already tells you that it's going to increase the, the, the size of the fonts of whatever whatever elements that is so that thing that's too big we just gives us one room let's see what that does yeah so this this is looking cool then in, um to let the user know that they can actually click the form we have to change the case so right now it looks like Nothing is active here. Consider here the cursor changes when we hover over the um, input so that the user knows that they can type in here. But for this button, it's like it's a static, it's just like an it's like a background. The user doesn't won't know that they can click it. I mean it's going to be intuitive that they can click it, but let's just pretend as if the user won't know that they can click it, right? So how do we make that obvious? So to make that obvious, we use another property called cursor, like this then we give it a value called pointer okay so cursor pointer and what that does is that changes our cursor to a pointer anytime we come in range of this element so if you're outside this element it's just a normal um, cursor but when we come in range of this element if we kind of hover over this element we get a cursor changing all right and i think that's pretty much it we have brought the design here into um into into reality right and one more thing is that this in this radio button is already checked how do you make that happen simple we just get back to our html then we go to that very one which is this right cool so we just come over here in the opening of the inputs okay so we just come here and see that very inputs there which is the last one prefer not to see and we say checked okay an attribute called checked that means by default it should be checked because you can see that now we have a little check on it right so yeah and then we we are we are we are, we are done we are completely done we are finished with this isn't that so exciting my people we have made it we have done it we have implemented a whole design on our own man this is so so awesome doesn't look so clean but yeah we've done it we've replicated this awesome 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 if you're able to go this far give yourself a very big pat on the back and then just know that you're getting close to greatness because if you've been able to do this then you are ready to do any other thing else we will be doing in the rest of this or on the rest of this channel right cool so again i'll push this code to the github repository so that if you get stuck in your own development you can um, you can go back and refer to it you can go and make corrections you can go and make amendments your projects using this okay so why don't i do that quickly i just push it quickly okay i just go to source control here then i'll see i'll just give it a, i'll just comment it quickly okay and i'll see um uh, completed complete Sorry, complete right Ted. Then I'll comment it. Okay, so I just comment it quickly. That should take a, a few minutes. Good. So it has been commented, and I'll just synchronize the changes. Okay, so that's that's taking long. Oh, it's done, All right? So this is now on the GitHub repository. You can see that we don't have this the colors that we're showing up here anymore. That means this is now on the GitHub repository. So if you go there, you're going to see this the same thing, the same code. Nothing is going to change. The same HTML, the same CSS. Nothing is going to change, right? All right, so we are done. We've done it. We've ended day three successfully. And then if you're able to come this far again, give yourself a big pat on the back. And yeah, guys, you might not going out, and I'll see you guys later. Keep being great, keep being obsessed. See you guys. <music>